Uh, so in order to get water volume calculations, one of the easiest ways to do that, if you don't have a place, well first of all, let me say, the easy, easy way to do that is to take a five gallon bucket and hold it under your outlet and figure out how many seconds it takes to fill it and then calculate you know, how many gallons a minute you're getting from that. Obviously that's the easy way. Most cases if you're developing a ram pump, you don't have a nice easy pipe already there to capture the water from. You may not have a pipe handy that you can divert the water, all the water in the stream from or from the pond or your source into a bucket. And if you don't have that, the next easy way to do that is to pick a spot in a stream like this where you have a given depth and width and then calculate the speed at which the water is traveling and calculate using depth, width, uh, depth and width what the volume is and then use the speed to calculate how fast that volume moves through. So we'll go over that in a minute but basically in this case you can see it's uh, I should have brought a measuring tape but it's about an inch deep and it's maybe about a uh, 10 inches wide or so where the water is actually flowing and the real simple way to do this is to take a measuring tape mark a length drop something that floats on it see how long it takes to travel that length then you have how much volume is moving at what speed we'll get into those calculations a little bit deeper later in this video but I just wanted to illustrate the concept for you all right then the other thing you need to know for a ram pump is what your total fall is now there's a couple ways to calculate that as well but uh, we'll go over the two easy ways one you can take something like a garden hose get it into your water source up above start a siphon on it if you don't know how to start a siphon uh, we could go over that or you can ask a question in the comment below uh, you start a siphon on it you bring it down and then wherever you bring that that hose end up this is called a water level you'll be you'll reach a point where you hit equilibrium where water stops flowing out the end of the hose and where you drop the hose back down a little bit it starts to flow and when you come up a little bit it stops that's your level point and then you can use a measuring tape to drop take your tape drop and figure out what your fall is in this case uh, we have about six and a half feet of fall from the top of the pond to where the ram pump is I used a combination of a water level line like I was talking about and the other thing I used was a string level on a string and I set a stake up at the water line right at the water's edge and I ran a string from that water's edge out level and I ended up having to come to a post here and run another string or extend that string level again out to where I wanted to set the pump and then when I got out over the pump with a level string running level from the water level you can just drop a measuring tape down and you figure out exactly what your drop is so those are some key pieces that you're going to need to have to uh, design and uh, determine whether your site will support a ram pump and installing a ram pump once you have those you got some calculations to do and uh, I think I've covered everything out in the field here that I want to cover uh, we'll get into calculations later in this video uh, but I just wanted to make sure that in daylight uh, you could see what this site is um, so you can better understand how to go about making these calculations so what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll go back inside and we'll make some calculations based on that and we'll talk about all the little uh, eccentricities and logistics and details that go with designing a ram pump and making it function like you want it to all right so that's it for now we'll go inside and we'll talk turkey okay so one of the core concepts you should understand right off the bat for building a ram pump is vertical foot and how it relates to pressure and head so head is the distance a vertical drop and it can be expressed in positive or negative values based on what you're doing <clears throat> but in general for every one foot of vertical rise you get 0.433 pounds per square inch of pressure at the bottom of that water column 
So as you go up, one foot, two foot, now you're at 0.86. Three foot, you're at 1.299. And at four foot, you're at 1.732 pounds per square inch at the bottom of that water column. This will be an important part of building your ramp pump because you're going to need two basic calculations. Number one, the vertical foot of head that you need or that you have from your water source to your ram pump or where your ram pump will be placed. And the other one you need is the vertical foot of head that you want to pump to because if that ratio isn't high enough, you won't be able to deliver a specified amount of water to the location that you want to. And, uh, and the height that you're pumping to will affect how much volume of water you will actually deliver. So using the line level and the water level techniques, you can calculate most likely, hopefully in your situation, uh, from your water source to, uh, to your ram pump. Okay, and so to calculate the elevation from your ram pump to your delivery point, uh, you can use several different methods. Uh, I would not count on uh, Google Earth. If you have a GPS unit, uh, you could probably get reasonable accuracy, but know that that could be off as much as 30 feet on vertical elevation also, even with good satellite coverage. Uh, so the best way to do it is to run a line level and drop measurements. And you can do series of strings level and just keep adding the drop measurement across the strings. And another way to do this is you can use an orange marker and a scope with a level and you get the level set and you shoot the far point. This is kind of like surveying or using a transit. If you have access to a transit, I highly recommend that. That is really a better way to do it. Or if you have access to an engineer who can do elevation datum, that's a possibility as well. Although typically that equipment is quite expensive to have someone come out and actually take elevation shots for. So I hope this helps you understand the basics of water pressure as it relates to elevation change or vertical foot of head. One other means of calculating the vertical height going uh, either to your ram pump or from your ram pump to your delivery point would be running any sort of pipe or hose down uh, from the highest point and filling that pipe or hose with water and putting a pressure gauge at the bottom and you could measure the pressure and calculate very accurately what the vertical distance of fall is. So uh, that line would have to be sealed completely and you'd have to fill it with water from some source uh, by whatever means necessary but that would be an accurate way to get exact vertical elevation over long distances and uh, multiple swales or where there's trees in the way obstructing your view. Uh, that would be another way to do it. However, uh, if you're going to do that, you might consider doing it in the delivery line size that you want to select for your ram pump. And then after you use that for your uh, pressure calculations and your elevation calculations, if you decide you can and want to go ahead and build a ram pump, you'll already have the delivery line for the system. These are just some other thoughts on how you can arrive at uh, accurate elevation datum for designing and building your ramp pump. Okay, let's briefly go back to the measuring the trench method for volume calculation. Real quick, we'll look at this box. Basically, that's what we're simulating in the previously mentioned trench method. You want a depth, you want a width, you want to make it relatively uniform, and you can even take a few boards and set in the stream bed and channel the water through them so you get a nice uniform height. The more accurate you can represent that, and the more accurately you can measure the speed, the more accurate your actual water volume calculations will be. But for example, let's look at this box and consider it to be as though it were the stream bed, or a box set into the stream bed with water flowing through it. So. Three and a half inches by two and a half inches by nine inches. Let's calculate that volume. So, three and a half inches by two and a half inches 
by 9 inches is 78.75 cubic inches. There's 231 cubic inches in a gallon. We'll call it 79 for easy calculations. Uh, and I did that backwards, so it's, uh, we'll say 79 over 231 cubic inches in a gallon. So that box is 0.34199 gallons, roughly. So about 0.35 gallons for every time that the water cycles through that box. So let's just consider that a second. So if the box is full of water, I'll demonstrate. and said water is flowing at a given speed, now we can calculate how many times per minute, effectively, this box is replaced in water volume. So in our calculation, we're looking at a water depth of two and a half inches, a channel width of three and a half inches, and we're taking a nine inch segment of that and measuring the speed the water travels through it. So if it takes uh, 60 seconds for that water to travel that length, then you're looking at 0.35 gallons a minute. And then of course you can calculate from there and figure out speed. Say it takes 10 seconds to, to traverse that, then you're doing 6 times 0.35 because there's 6 10 second segments in a minute. And uh, let's see, 6 times 3, 18, so you're looking around 20 gallons a minute. So this is just an example of how to do this. Uh, but remember to picture this full like this shot here. So just remember every time this fills up, that's 0.35 gallons. And then you can make your calculations easily based on the trench, the water depth, and the speed at which it's traveling.